So, believe it or not, the iPhones are a matter of massive public interest. And I think at this moment, which also happens to be the festive season here in India, Apple has the most diverse smartphone lineup. I don't think there has ever been a smartphone lineup in Apple's history where the oldest and the latest devices have been as desirable as they seem to be right now. And I think that's mainly because of just how capable the old devices still are. Now, one thing to keep in mind while choosing an iPhone is that the software in every iPhone is the same, meaning the key differentiating factor between them is the hardware. So the way you need to take a decision is by asking yourself whether you need wireless charging or whether you need a headphone jack or whether you need a telephoto lens or 3D touch or a bigger screen and further on. So let's start with the basic, the iPhone SE, which is the smallest, most affordable and technically the oldest iPhone at the moment. And I say oldest because even though it released in 2016, it's actually a 3 year old 6S inside the body of a 5 year old 5S. And the challenge in using the SE is not the actual hardware, but that size. The hardware for the most part is still great. The processor is still really capable, the camera is still pretty incredible, there is still a headphone jack, and that industrial design is a masterpiece. But it will only be good if you are comfortable using such a small phone, such a small screen, and such a tiny battery. I actually did a dedicated video on the SE just a couple of months ago in which I spoke about all these things in depth. I would highly recommend to check that out. But in case you're just not comfortable with such a small phone, the iPhone 6 might seem like a right choice, but I would insist to skip that one and go with the iPhone 6S. The 6S, even though it's slightly more expensive, has the second generation Touch ID, which is exponentially quicker than the first generation. It has a comfortable screen size and a bigger battery coming from the SE. And compared to the 6, it has most importantly a more powerful and durable aluminium frame thanks to Bengate. It has 2GB of RAM instead of just one in the 6 and a much better processor inside. Oh and obviously it has 3D touch, but that's just being fancy. Next is the iPhone 7. This has been my personal phone since the time it came out, since two years. And even though this looks like a replica of the 6S, it has some massive hardware differences. Firstly, the lack of the headphone jack. Secondly, the changed home button, which does not physically press, but it vibrates to give you a sensation of being pressed. And thirdly, it has an IP67 rating, which means it's water resistant up to 1 meters till 30 minutes. That can be convenient. There are also some minor upgrades like it has a slightly bigger battery, a slightly bigger aperture in the camera lens, and a stereo speaker system that sounds pretty nice compared to the one on the 6S. But the major upgrade is in the 7 Plus with that dual camera. That secondary camera in the 7 Plus has a telephoto lens, which is basically a lens with a higher focal length, and it does two things. First, it lets you capture far off things without any major quality loss. And secondly, it helps in portrait mode, which basically blurs out the background behind the subject, giving a DSLR-like feel. It's not perfect with edge detection, at least not with the 7 Plus, but I know it is very tempting. And if you have the budget, I would actually recommend the 7 Plus over the 7, not just because of the two cameras, but also because of a bigger battery and a higher resolution 1080p display. It's a really attractive package. In fact, I would even recommend the 7 and the 7 Plus over the 8 and the 8 Plus because the upgrades in the 8, which are wireless charging and slightly updated specs across the board, are not really worth the massive price difference between the two. Also the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus are the last iPhones with the home button and those bezels because post the iPhone 8 is Apple's new design language, the almost all screen iPhones that don't have the home button, don't have Touch ID, but have a notch. I'm talking about the iPhone 10, the 10R, and the 10S. Now the only reason why you would opt for the 10S is firstly because of that OLED display, and secondly because of the best processor Apple makes right now, which perhaps also happens to be the best in the entire smartphone industry. And the only reason why you would want to opt for the iPhone 10 is because you really want that OLED display but at a lower price tag. I personally think that the most practical choice of the bunch is the iPhone 10R. It is even cheaper than the 10, but as the processor and the camera of the 10S. In fact, it has an even better battery life than that of the 10S and 10S Max. The only major difference is that LCD instead of OLED and no telephoto lens at the rear. That is pretty much it. 
I've actually been using this as my main phone since the day it came out. And just last week, I did an impressions video in which I spoke about that display and how it might or might not be a problem for a few people. It's linked below. For me personally, it's not a big deal. In fact, I think it's one of the most color accurate displays I've seen. My review should be out in a week or two. And even though I normally don't give out spoilers for my reviews, but for this video, I'm just going to tell you that the iPhone XR is turning out to be a complete package. This is the cheapest of the bunch with the new design and is equally as powerful as the most expensive iPhone. So that's pretty much it. That's what I think should be your thought process while getting an iPhone. These are some of the most expensive phones in the entire phone market. So I would request you to get what you think you actually need and what will actually last longer. Also, these are delicate devices and if you break them, Apple being Apple charges a really hefty amount to repair them. So it's better to stay protective. I'll leave the link to the cases that I use personally in the description. So make sure to check those out. Once you get those, you're basically sorted. Okay, so there's your guide. I hope you had a great festive season. Make sure to stick around for the 10 hour review and I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care.